has been the economic lifeblood of Azerbaijan, a country on the Caspian Sea. Its oil boom is one of the longest in history, stretching back 150 years. But the industry has left a deadly legacy. Along the shore of the Caspian Sea lies Azerbaijan's capital, Baku. The city has long had wealth and splendor. As these old newsreels from the Soviet era testify. And today in the town center, signs of prosperity. Shoppers stroll in the streets. Screens advertise designer watches. Families play in the park. But there's trouble looming on the horizon, quite literally. At the city's edges, towers and derricks rise in a dirty haze. Rigs crowd in on people's homes. The oil industry is a bedrock of Azerbaijan's economy. But in Baku, it's created a great paradox because oil, the very source of the city's financial salvation, is putting the lives of its own citizens at risk. This abandoned factory on the edge of Baku used to process byproducts from the oil industry to create iodine. It's left behind heaps of charcoal pellets that are dangerously radioactive. Agababa Husseinov is an engineer and he's here to measure the levels of radiation. The main accumulation is located over there. Here the entire territory is contaminated with radioactive charcoal. Right in the middle of this contamination live a number of impoverished families displaced by conflict in other parts of Azerbaijan. They're all at high risk and when they spot Mr. Hussainov, they are not at all happy. How many times can you come and check on people? We're surrounded by toxins. All of us are sick. Mr. Hussainov can do little to calm the family's anger. We have been here for 15 years. What is the use of your visit here? We will not allow you in again. Whether he can return or not, Mr. Hussainov knows that the effects of radiation have already spread well beyond the factory grounds. In Baku, we have 300 windy days. The wind spreads charcoal to where people are living. The charcoal contains dissolved radium. Pollution caused by the oil industry is putting current and future generations in the area at risk, like these newborns in a clinic not far from the factory. Doctors report high levels of respiratory infections, TB, skin diseases, tumors, and congenital abnormalities. A polluted environment definitely causes problems with human health. Racine Satadzada is head of environmental policy with Azerbaijan's government. He's not got an easy job since the Absheron Peninsula, where Baku is located, is one of the most polluted areas on Earth. The impact isn't only on people's health. Oil is also threatening to choke off Baku's plans to expand. Big oil forms a noose of highly polluted districts around the city, in the very places where Baku needs to build to house its growing population. The city is surrounded by this polluted area, and this is something we need to tackle and to clean up. Oil pollution has a long history in Baku, where industrial extraction goes back 150 years. For most of that period, the health and safety of workers has come a distant second to the economic imperative to pump as much oil as possible. At one time, horses were put to work drawing oil from shallow wells. 
Sometimes people took the strain, and the health impact on workers like this man must surely have been devastating. Gradually, larger rigs and deeper wells massed around the city. In a film from the 1930s, an oil blowout from a new drilling rig sets the stage for a heroic battle by the workers against an overwhelming tide of oil. They eventually return to celebrate victory in the city. But the legacy of oil pollution lies heavily on Baku to this day. In response, Azerbaijan's government has launched a major cleanup operation for the whole area, and the World Bank is supporting this effort to the tune of $164 million. In many parts of the city, diggers remove oil sludge. Bulldozers clear rubble, debris, and vast amounts of dumped garbage. The authorities are reclaiming land and planting it with trees. The lakes around Baku, as well as the waters of the Caspian Sea, have also suffered badly over the years. People still swim along the city's shoreline, but at their own considerable risk. The sign says no swimming, and for good reason. Sewage pipes are not far away. The water treatment plant does not work at full capacity. Ahmed Memyedov is deputy director of the Azeri water treatment system. The plant handles only half of the waste. The rest is discharged untreated. It goes into the sea and the lakes, which are all surrounded by human populations. As a result, water from the lakes and bay in the Baku area is highly polluted with both oil and human waste, all too visible in this filthy water being tested in the laboratory. The Caspian Sea itself has already seen its fish catch drastically reduced. Now, a new water treatment plant and a new pipeline to carry waste out of Baku's lake area are under construction. At long last, there's relief in sight for the families at the abandoned iodine factory. The plant is soon to be cleared and cleaned, and they will be offered homes in another location. No one underestimates the challenge of cleaning up a century and a half of oil pollution. But Baku finally has a chance of providing better protection for its citizens' health, even as it reaps the economic rewards of oil.